and movie to to compete with YouTube. They're over the 30 seconds. They're over the minute videos. They're saying, come, bring your content over here because they have an audience of people. Hello, everyone. And welcome aboard once again. Whew, I'm so, uh, I don't know. I just left the airport and I just decided to uh, get on here, grab a cup of coffee, see what motivating you to win is talking about. Hey, did you, you, did you all enjoy my video last night? I was sort of like in between working out and I thought, okay, I got my music, my workout music. Now, maybe I'll just do a quick video. But hey, did you guys enjoy it? <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought it was, yeah, maybe a little childish, but um, no pun intended, but it was what I was feeling in that moment. And I just felt like I needed to do that. I took it down, but uh, if you guys want me to put it back up, drop down in the comments. I'll put it back up. So, let's see. What's the, today's title? Mm. Now, I have to drink my coffee because it's hot, and I don't want it to get cold. So, if, I hope you don't mind the little slurp here and there. Okay, um, today's title is uh, called By Motivating You to Win. Fake bishops and pastors in plain sight. Five characteristics. And I know she must have hundreds of videos about this very topic. Um, pretty much this is, I'm sure it's going to be a repeat. I'm just going to pull out certain segments of it and uh, see what she's talking about. Okay, so... While I sip my coffee, let's hear what motivating you to win has to say today. People, Instagram is getting squeezed out. It's YouTube and TikTok right now, my friend. Facebook, mm -mm, mm -mm. it's TikTok and YouTube, they move it. And she seems to uh, know that very well. So we pretty much know where she's spending all of her time. She's taking statistics. They move it. So she'll know which platform to get on. Trust and believe she's going to go. I, yeah, she's talking about TikTok and how bad it is. But I'll bet you she's going to be, if she's not already on TikTok, oh, yeah, she's, she's looking at that one. She's eyeballing that one next. I don't know. She may already be on TikTok. And uh, she wants to be a part of that bag as well. So, so when you have an overseer that takes the crumbs of, of, of dark hearts and feed it to the, the congregation, whoo, my friend, whoo, y'all better know they in plain sight. Number four, you got to be. Oh, my goodness. I missed one, two, and three. Now she's on number four. Whoops. Be careful of a bishop or a pastor that is single. When a man is out here, ha, rump shaking, got the music, everything. Did she say the men are rump shaking now? I mean, dad, you mean to tell me she talking about the men rump shaking? I mean, what is it about this rump shaking? My God! And then, okay, let's let me let me see what she's talking about. Everything about him, he's profane. He's talking uh, uh, all of this conversation. Why he can and should be able to use profanity and all this foolishness. This man is playing that rump shaking music in the congregation. I'm I'm willing to bet hands down he is unclean in his loins. He is not chaste. But see, you don't have any proof motivating you to win. You're just making these blanket statements. And where is your proof? You, you, you're you just making all these presumptions. Where is your proof? That, what you're just saying, just because a man is single and in ministry, what, I mean, what are you saying? I mean, you don't even know. 
And some, some people, they do have the gift of abstinence. I'm just saying, why are you accusing people before you even know for a fact that that's what it is? How can you be chased when your diet is secular music? And talking about being chased, she's saying that, you know, uh, they're not chased. There, there is really a lot to be said about women like her. Now, you, you seem to be the expert on what a church is supposed to look like. Well, let me ask you this question, motivating you to win. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why aren't you a part of a fellowship? You seem to be the expert on what a church is supposed to look like, how a church is supposed to be ran, the role that the bishop, the pastor is supposed to take and have over the congregation. Uh, where is your church? And why you used to appear telling us all the things that we need to check off and in, in, in terms of uh, what a church is supposed to look like and act like, I'm scratching my head. <laughs> Where is your church? Where is your church? And why aren't you being more helpful in the body of Christ in leading others to such church? Every church that I have ever gone to, there was always something in there. Always mess here, mess there. Okay, that's what people do. Because you don't need but two people to get stuff started, okay? You don't need but two people to disagree. Because that's just the way that the Lord made us. Look, that's just what it is. Now, I know we got a lot of serious allegations going on out here in the church, in the body of Christ. And there is a lot to be said about it. I don't have all of my evidence and my facts, so I am not going to speak on it. I'm listening to all the chatter of what everybody is saying. But at the end of the day, I stopped putting my trust in men of the cloth, pastors, bishops, honey, years ago. And look, they <laughs> they fall one by one and I just sit back and, and just continue my praise to the Lord. Because at the end of the day, the, to me, it's because of the ignorance of the brethren that people are allowed to come in, bishops, fake bishops, pastors, whoever, prophets, they're allowed to come in and just do what they want because of the ignorant brethren. They're, you know, okay, like, I'm gonna call his name T.D. Jakes. I hope I don't get a copyright strike because I called his name. <laughs> I don't care. But anyway, T.D. Jakes, Gino Jennings, which he's going to be next, okay? And I'm going to be sitting right here, praising my Lord. They both believe the same doctrine. If you had a check, if everybody had to check that doctrine that they teach, that they were teaching, that they are teaching, look, this could have been dealt with years ago. So don't come crying now. See, this is why I'm up here on my platform taking time out of my busy schedule, if I could just get a few nuggets to the brethren. Because I, too, was ignorant at one time. And I still may be somewhat ignorant, but I'm learning. And I'm not as ignorant as I used to be. I mean, come on, these, these guys are getting more and more clever by the day. And just when you think you have mastered it, you know what to look for, you, you're just not sharp enough. Because, uh, you know, it, it just takes the Spirit of God. It takes the Holy Spirit to 
give us that discernment that we need. And, and I can honestly say that in light of what is going on right now, I can honestly say that I'm not shocked or surprised because there were, well, first of all, it, with me, the way that I'm trained, my eyes, my ears, the way I am trained, and this is what I'm on my platform trying to encourage everybody else to learn to train your ears, learn to train your eyes, and by all means, study your Bible. Have your own quiet time. Find good pastors who have no motive. They're not trying to grab the bag. They just really want to put the truth of the grace gospel out, out here to help people. Okay, they have no motive. They're just good teachers and they're gifted by God. You know, when you, when, at least if you could just do that much, it would help you tremendously. Excuse me a minute. Okay, got to grab a sip. And it's because of that, I was able to call out motivating you to win. Okay, now she's up here now. I don't even know if I want to go through this video, but she's up here now and she's ranting and a raving. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she, maybe she got disappointed. Maybe she was a follower of uh, these people that have fallen. And um, I don't like to use the term falling from grace because that is that is not a biblical term, you know, that we should use in the body of Christ. Honey, in spite of what you may think, but I'm going to say this and I'm going to go on record. Whatever, if this, these people that have fallen, all these people that have fallen, past and present, if they put their faith and trust in Christ at some point in their life, I mean, they could have been a child. They could have been a, a teenager. They could have been a, a young adult. I'm telling you, they are saved. Yes, they are. They are saved because salvation is the free gift of God. And we don't have to do anything to get it. And guess what? You can't do anything to lose it. But if you believe, see, just because you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, that doesn't change your flesh. Your flesh is still your flesh. And, and you know what? God didn't change your flesh. I mean, you can put on all these garments and make yourself look holy, but I'm telling you, you are no more holier than that woman with a pair of yoga pants on. Okay. Because we're not talking about performance. We're talking about position. If that woman who is provocatively dressed, if, if, if she put her trust in, in Christ at once upon a time, and maybe she hadn't gotten to the point where she walked out her, sal her salvation as far as, you know, her performance and her, you know, her, her, her character, maybe, you know, just her um, conduct. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, her conduct. So maybe she hadn't walked all that out or maybe he hadn't walked all that out. But I'm telling you, that's not going to change his position in Christ. His position, because you know why? The body of Christ, like I've told you all before, the body of Christ gets saved a different way. And that's what God, that's all God wanted from the body of Christ. We are Gentiles who had no inheritance and had no um, position in, 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 in Christ. And see, God, he, he made it so simple that um, he just, all we have to do is believe. <coughs> Excuse me. All we have to do is believe. And that is a hard pill to swallow. And when you teach anything other than that, you are teaching a heresy. You are teaching a false gospel. And this is where motivating you to win is. She wants to put people in hell so bad. 
And it's always based on their outward exterior, how they live their life, their, their um, sexual preference. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the whole world was perfect and nobody had any flaws? Wouldn't that be just wonderful? But that's not the world in which we live. And God knew all of this. Like I said before, God would never entrust his salvation to, let's say for, an, I would say man, but I'm going to say motivate you to win in this case. He would not, because you think that your attire, your living holy, which I don't understand how you, you know, what you, what you mean by that, because you know, yeah, we're talking about your conduct. Yeah, you should carry yourself in a way, okay, that is befitting to, you know, what you believe. But you're not holy by what you wear. You're not holy by anything other than what Christ has done. It is the blood of Jesus that makes us holy. Now, if you want to say, well, you don't, you don't look the part, you don't walk the part, you don't act the part. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Okay. And so these people that everybody's trying to throw into hell, these leaders that, uh, people are just trying to throw into hell. Now, all I have to say is not so fast. Okay. First of all, we need to gather up all of the true facts to find out if this is true. And if it is true, you still can't put him in hell because he's saved by grace. He's saved if, 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 if he is saved, if they are saved, they are saved. If they believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus and they're put in, they put their trust in his blood. And like I said, it could have happened when they were a child when you get saved as a child and you grow up and start living life, God never forgets. And he will never take your salvation away from you. Okay? Because we, we go by, look, by the time we go to that grave, we've gone through a lot of changes in our life. So many changes. And see, God knew that. That's why he would not trust he would not trust man with his plan of salvation. He had to do it all. And he didn't have to do it. He didn't do it to a point. He didn't do it until you got a certain age. He didn't do it uh, until, uh, he didn't do it like just for the past and the present. It makes more sense when you look at it in the way it's supposed to be uh, looked, at, looked upon. And that is he, he completed it, the whole thing. He, he completed past, present, and future sins. Now, you can fight me all day on that, but that makes more sense to me because the way I see God, yes, he can do that, okay? You may not understand it because you really want it to be about yourself. People really want it to be about themselves. They really want to put their hands in it just to say, look, I did something, and I get it. But in this case, you're going to have to just step aside because you, you can't do anything when it comes to salvation. It is the free gift and you're just going to have to accept it, be thankful for it and go with it. And just, just try to live your life the best way that you can. And notice I said your life because, you, you know, you, you can't be these people that want to jump up in everybody's face and tell them how they're supposed to live. No, you just take care of your, you got one person to worry about. You worry about that person. Salvation is the free gift. You let the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit forms a seal around every believer's soul. Okay. And it cannot be broken. And that's why, and when you, okay, we are members of the body of Christ. Do you think Christ will dismember himself and cast his member in the lake of fire, really? You really do believe that? That he would cut off his his uh, pinky and throw it in the lake of fire? Now, I might be the pinky. You might be the pinky. I don't know what part of the body of Christ you are. But if you think that Christ is going to cut that part off and throw it in the 
lake of fire. You don't understand salvation. You don't understand how this thing works. And all I can tell you is you need to go back to plan A and get understanding so that you can see how all this stuff jointly fits together. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, let, let's move on a little bit more. I have a lot to say about this, but I'm going to go ahead and listen to some more of this uh, video before I click it, click off. And make you want to rock check. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to walk carefully with a man who is single and, and he's feeding you that type of, app that's his appetite. There is something going on with that brother. He is either on the down low, homosexual, or that man is getting it on. He got lovers and he is using his influence in that not one shred of proof not one shred of proof she has spewed out a lot not one shred of proof where is your proof motivating you to win platform and that's why he ain't married because he can't because he got issues. But if you if you know so much about all this stuff, how come you, like I said, go back to my original question. Where is your church? Where is your perfect church? Okay. Where is your perfect church? Because every church I've ever been in, it was anything but perfect. And uh, Paul had the same issues in his church. Where is your church? The kingdom church had the same issues in the kingdom church. Where is this church because you, you got all these <clears throat> requirements and you have a checklist and you're just checking off. Okay, if they do this, then that's not the one. That's the, Okay, where is your church? I want to know because we want to know and we want to go and visit. And how come you cannot refer anybody to a church or a fellowship? You don't even go to church. You don't even have a covering. You don't have no man that's speaking into you. No man of the cloth that's holding you accountable for your conduct and what you put out over the airways. Nobody's checking your work, just you. You're the only person. I challenge anybody that is going to a church where they are secular and it's a lot of entertainment, it's a lot of uh, um, motivational preaching, it's not real preaching of the gospel to challenge you day to day to put down the flesh, to slay the flesh. I'm willing to bet. What did I tell you all? Please do not put people's names in the chat. Sister, sister, what? please redact that. Please, brother and sister, what? don't bring the garbage on my oh, chat. Oh, wait a minute. I Wait a minute. Names What's going on? Chat. What? And if you keep doing it, I will be cutting off all chat. Ooh. This ain't other people's channels. This is this is Sister Sharon, and this is my channel. Oh, let me get some drink. <coughs> foolishness on the chat. <laughs> I said it yesterday. Mm. Do not put people's names in the chat. You're messy. Take that mess somewhere else. Wow. Angry much? I mean that that. Oh, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. I'm I'm just like, <sighs> mm. Whew, let me catch my breath. Um, what was that all about? Um, she just like went off, didn't she? And uh, I mean, I I I. I don't have access to her chat. I don't know what happened, but um, what did she tell Cynthia to do? Hold on, let's back up. Church, where they are secular and it's a lot of entertainment. It it's a lot of uh, um, motivational preaching. It's not real preaching of the gospel to challenge you day to day to put down the flesh. Well, uh, as far as, I'm going to go back to that anger uh, episode, but you don't understand how this works. We have the Holy Spirit. You want to walk around and you want to bully people 
and get in people's faces about their dress, their attire, their, you know, whatever it is that you want to get in their face, you're going to find something because you're just one of them kind of people. You're going to find something wrong with everybody. You have your rule book. In what and your requirements and what is acceptable, but you got to keep in mind you're just one person, and you 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 don't speak from the the mind of God. What is appalling to you? Listen, God has already made provisions for that because He knows that man. He He knows that man is is weak. Man is frail. Man is not going to get it right. God knows that. And that, that's not a, a reason for us to be failures. But it's just a, a matter of fact. It's just a matter of fact. Now, you seem to think that you're going to create this perfect world. And you're going to be fact checking everybody. And you're going to be telling everybody what they need to do. And all you you're just really frustrated. And I can I can I can hear the frustration in your voice. I think you need to really think about rethink this thing. And I think you need to just worry about yourself. Because it's not worth you getting your blood pressure up trying trying to correct humans. The Holy Spirit, listen, if the Holy Spirit don't do it, you definitely are not going to do it. Okay, the Holy Spirit. If people grieve the Holy Spirit, you think you're going to come and you're going to uh, straighten them out? You No, you you just flesh like everybody else. And people are going to start looking at you like, well, well, what gives you the right? I'm just saying, you just got to let people be people. This world is just too big. And, they're, and, and God, he, you know, the way God moves on people, sometimes they, they may not even look. Can I say, can I, can I take a stretch for a second? I've had, uh, at least in my lifetime, I have had several people that have actually preached a message to me. And I didn't even catch it until I thought about it later. And I thought about it and I said, but you know what? That person really preached a sermon to me. They didn't look the part. You know, th let me tell you, you can't put restraints on God because God can use an old drunk to preach a, a sermon, a message to somebody who thinks that they know the way. God can use an old drunk. God can use a crackhead. God can use a prostitute. You know, I'm saying you better just be careful about who you think is qualified and who who you qualify and who do you think is disqualified. I've been in this back and forth arguing on my channel with Motivating You to Win because I'm trying to get her eyes off of the flesh because sometimes people come in disguises and you know what? It works both ways. Some people, they wear a disguise to deceive people and they look all, that's why I don't be looking at y'all's long dresses, okay? I don't be looking at y'all's long dresses. I, I go straight for the heart and the, the 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 spirit of that person, you know, and, and you can get a lot that way. But look, I don't be looking at people's attire because I realize that that can be, it works both ways. A person could use their attire to deceive and then they can use their attire and you, you know, they just being who they are and in your eyes, they look like a whore or a pimp or whoever. I'm just saying, get your eyes off of the flesh. Get your eyes off of the flesh because you don't know who God is going to use to bring you a word and you're going to miss it. All because you got your eyes on that flesh. To slay the flesh. I'm willing to bet. What did I tell you all? Please do not put people's names in the chat. Sister Cynthia, please redact that. Please, brother and sister, don't bring the garbage on my channel. 
Yeah, but you know what? You use how how many videos do you have in your archives where you actually use people's full name? You use their first name, the middle name, and the last name. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You use people that that's how we find out about all these people. You you use the videos, you use their names. You, oh my gosh, I, are you being hypocritical here? Because I'm starting to get that, that feeling. I mean, I think you're just being hypocritical. Why are you tripping now because somebody's using a name? Why are you tripping now? You use names all the time. Why are you tripping? Do not mention people's names in the chat. And if you keep doing it, I will be cutting off all chat. So? This I thought it was the Lord's channel. Oh, but now uh, it's Sister Sharon's channel. And your 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 anger is is really exuding through the screens, and everybody's picking up your anger. Some people like that type of abuse, but I find it appalling. And you are not a chaste woman. Because you cannot control your anger. You're yelling and screaming at the top of your lungs practically. I had to turn my volume down because I can't, you know, and, and it's down low, but yet you're still screaming. I don't know what you're upset about, but um, I think you need to tone, tone it down. You need to check your uh, attitude. Check your attitude because you are acting very mean. And I don't care what you call it, but you are acting very mean right now. And you are abusing your viewers. You are abusing your viewers. You are verbally abusing your viewers. You got a lot of triggers. Because it is a trap. She a has a lot of triggers, y'all. When you're mentioning people, you're sloppy and you're messy. Oh my this goodness. Is how and why Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? All them videos she's got in her archives, and she's talking about people being messy. She built her whole library of videos where she's bashing people. And she's calling them by name. And here she's talking about. It's on the chat. <clears throat> I said it yesterday. Do not put people's names in the chat. You're messy. Take that mess somewhere else. <laughs> We're doing it over here. You keep it up. We Listen, friend. All of you listen and hear me very closely. Because this is a trigger for me. Start with your videos then. Start if you don't like foolishness, start taking them down because they are full of foolishness. Why? That woman is mean. Yeah, open up them comments. Yeah, open up them comments. She's not going to open up them comments because she, and here I'm begging, <laughs> I'm begging y'all to make some comments on my channel and nobody is making any comments on my, but look, my comment section is wide open, but here you got this woman and she, she has all these people following her. And then she'll turn the comments off and won't even give you a voice. And all these little lost uh, sheep go right on. Yeah, she turned the comments off, you know, but that's okay. And you don't even understand that she is shutting you 
down. That's her way of saying, I'm going to take away your freedom of speech. I'm going to take away your right to speak. She she put a muzzle over you, you guys' mouth and you, you seem to be okay with that. If you're going to jump up and, 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 and get on these social media platforms, these platforms are about communication. If you don't want, if you're one of them kind of people, you don't really like communication, then this is the last place you want to be. You have to take the risk of being cussed out. I mean, you, you, I, I, look, I get it. You can't control what you will allow. But like I said, a good argument is as long as it is healthy, you know, it's okay to have disagreements as long as it's healthy. And if you have to go back and forth, back and forth with a person, sometimes, I don't know if I ever told you guys the story where I had to deal with, I don't know, must have been about, I would say nearly 50 atheists. And it was a group, it was a group of them. And it was just me by myself. And we did it on one of these uh, social media platforms. And we did a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And to the point where I think a year had gone by. And it was the same group. And I I don't know how we actually ended it. But one thing I can say about these atheists. It, they, they really put up a really, really strong argument to the point where I had to really do some deep diving in those scriptures. And it got downright intimidating. But uh, it was something about the, the back and forth, you know, them saying things to me. I learned some things from them. I'm sure they learned a lot from me. But it really helped me as I think it, it helped me to persevere and stand my ground and don't be intimidated. You know, um, I would like to think that I changed them, their way of thinking towards God. I would like to think that. I don't know. But uh, the fact that they kept coming back for more makes me think it is possible that I planted some type of seed. You know, um, and like I said, these people were scientists. They traveled, they were well-traveled. They would tell me places, you know, where they've gone and, you know, they, I mean, I don't know if they were honest, but just based on the, the, the conversations that we had, I, I tend to believe that they were, they were scientists. They, well, they told, they, they said they were scientists and they would tell me, you know, certain things about the scientific world and, you know, things like that. Um, it would be really interesting to uh, talk with them now or even like when COVID hit. It would have been very interesting because I would have really challenged them. But anyway, um, I'm just saying it taught me a lot of patience. And I, I you know, I, I don't have to like go off because I'm telling you, motivating you to win behind all that anger, I promise you. The root of her anger is fear. I, I promise you. And now that we know that, so we can we we can deal with her a little bit more, I guess, gently. You don't want to like like take her head on and and just try to, you know, just go tick for tack with her because you're not. I mean, she's just really bullheaded. And the root of her anger, I I promise you, it is. It is fear that has never been dealt with that she she needs to actually come face to face with her with her fears. It could uh it could be childhood trauma that she never really dealt with. And I'm not trying to step in as a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but it's just certain things. I did very well in psychology actually when I was uh in school. I did very well. <laughs> Cuz it was just to me it was just so simple. It was just natural. 
And um, yeah, it, it, I think fear is the root of, of, is the culprit. Fear is the culprit of her anger. And so, and many of us, you know, most of us, we, we have a lot of fears that we never really brought to the surface but uh, yeah, this is what's going on here. It's motivating you to win. She's she's really a fearful person. Don't don't be moved by this anger, this outburst of anger. Don't be moved by that. I'm telling you, it's fear. We ain't having it over here. You're sloppy, and you need to repent because something is wrong. When y'all know what you're doing, you bring the garbage in the chats and in the comments. You know what you're doing, and you need to repent. I've said it over and over. We're not having it here. And if you keep it up, because we, we don't have to babysit your comments. We grown women. We ha I have a job. I work, friends. I work very hard. I come here because I'm called here. But you're not going to. You're not taking over. Well, I don't know if you're called there or not, but I would say this. You may be. You may not be. I don't know. I think you personally, I think that motivating you to win called herself. And I do believe that the reason why she started her channel in the first place, I don't believe she was called by God to start that channel, even though she lied and said God forced her to start her channel against her will. So that was there. She's got the video. Okay. I don't know which video it is, but she said, I remember I heard it clear as day. She said, as a matter of fact, she said it in a couple of videos, God Forced her against her will, she said. I was trying to quote her. I think that was the quote. And I think at that time, I was sort of like kind of phasing out, phasing, getting away from her, her channel. And uh, I, I remember she said that. And I, I thought about that. I said, I don't think under the dispensation of grace, you know, God doesn't force us. And another thing I want to mention, you know, about when people say God called them, God called them. God is not calling. God called us to the gospel. That's our calling. We are called to the gospel. Now, what do we do next? We are called to share the gospel. We are called to rightly divide, come to an understanding in the knowledge of the word. That's really it. If you desire, what is it? it was in, I think, Timothy, where it says, he that desires the role of a bishop. See, first, you have to have that desire. If you desire a role of something, it, hey, that that's what you are. You know, you could be called, I guess you could say you're called to it, but I think I think it's more of you desiring it. Because uh, God doesn't call us the way he called people in the Old Testament. And like prophets and and um, apostles. He's not calling us like that. And this is why we, we are in the situation that we're in with these prophets. Because I've told you before. That, well, what's there to be uh, the, the prophetic calendar is on hold. The kingdom church is going to resume after the dispensation of grace has ended and the church is raptured up. If you can't get these simple truths, you're going to be twisted and a prophet going to be getting up in your face trying to prophesy something, getting up in the church trying to prophesy something. You understand a timeout is like a game. A game when 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 they call a timeout. That means everything is on hold. Okay. The scoreboard stops. Everything stops. Because they're in, they, they call the timeout. Well, see, that's what God did. God called a timeout. So everything is on hold. The prophetic calendar is on hold. And that's why there's no prophecies going forth through the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ is a mystery. So why would the body of Christ be uh, prophesizing when they themselves are a mystery? 
Why would they be prophesizing? <laughs> the Old Testament saints didn't know about the body of Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't know about the body of Christ. It was hidden in God. It was hidden in God. God kept it hidden until he was ready to reveal it through Paul. So all this stuff about these prophets and prophetess, they, what are they prophesizing about? Not, no prophecy is going forth. I've got videos trying uh, where I broke that down. I've got videos. And if you really want to search uh, my archives, you know, go ahead and, uh, and, and, and I've broke it down. I've broken it down for everybody. So anyway, uh, I think we're going to be finishing this out because uh, I've already spent way too much time on one over thing. Chat, you ain't taking over the You ain't doing none of it. And one way we will shut you all down, I will turn it off. Do you hear me talking to you, brother and sister? Do you not know that you are allowing your flesh to put you in a position to stay low? Because you... I've had enough. I can't take no more of that screaming. Well, there. look, my video is over. I'm going to go ahead and get started, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I got my son uh, to the airport, and I am, he's in the military, so he. I had a wonderful holiday. It was beautiful. Beautiful Christmas. Had all my family and had a good, good food. Oh man, so much food. And I know I picked up about five or 10 pounds. So now I'm going to uh, try to work, get my resolutions in order, um, get back on my keto journey. And I gotta get all this stuff down. I wish I could have somebody come over and help me. <laughs> I got I got somebody I could, uh, but I think I'd rather take it down. I, I almost want to keep it up like maybe a couple more days because it's so pretty. I just don't want to let it go, but I have to. I got to get things back to normal. So I hope everybody is just having a blessed day. Um, I got my poinsettia. I just want to, you know, I'm not going to throw mine away. I'm, I have like at least, I bought a bunch of them, so they're all over the place. And they're still very much alive. So I'm going to just hang on to them even after I've taken everything down. I'm just going to hang on to my poinsettias because they're so pretty and just let them die out. And that may be, what, spring? I don't know. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. I just thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to start uh, getting some more videos going. And uh, God bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace and out.